All right, so I chose the ear in here yes. to do this, okay? Because this place is supposed to be haunted by a ghost named Mickey. He's a drunken sailor. What happens to people here is they uh, get their drink and sit down at the table, and by the time they get down at the table, their drink is gone. No. So he'll drink your beer on your whatever you're drinking. What a shitty ghost. So you yeah. you believe in ghosts? I would love to. Yeah. I want so bad to to believe in, in, in ghosts or or just the, the the fact that there's something else. You know, I think that that's what's so appealing to me is that is that if there are ghosts involved in, in, <laughs> in our lives, then that means that this isn't the only thing. Right. You know, that there, there's something other than just darkness at the end of it. So I have a theory. Go ahead. This is what actually made me believe in ghosts officially. Okay, 100%. please. A dog whistle. Okay. So you know a dog whistle, right? right? Uh, you blow on it and your dogs can hear it. Um, but humans can't detect it because it's at just a different frequency yes. that, you know, our, our, our ears for the most part aren't picking it up, but for them it's super loud and like they... So that got me thinking of if there's sounds out there that are happening that I can't hear because they're just at a different frequency, why wouldn't there be other beings around that my senses just aren't picking up? Different but for other people or for other beings like dogs, they always say dogs can see ghosts. I think all ghosts talk in a really high voice. <laughs> that's the it's issue. It's possible. It's okay. possible. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's the issue. Uh. Like, I don't want to put myself in those situations. Like, right. I, I've never done a Ouija board. I've done that. Have I've done you? that at a haunted hotel. Get out of here. Yes. Yeah. And what happened? Well, I think somebody was pushing it. You do? <laughs> yeah. I think I think in order for those things to work, you have to do it with an asshole. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, that's the only way it's really going to, it's going to be any fun. It's, right. It's, it's like somebody's, somebody's got to be, yeah, yeah, like, you, you be the guy. Yeah, you have to, you know. Um, so you're a skeptic. I, I don't know if I'm, I'm so much a skeptic, it's just that I feel like a lot of things are, are easily explained. Yeah. Um, and, and that's unfortunate. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? I, I wish that it was. Uh, I wish that it was like, oh my god, like the the beer's not here anymore. It's like, right. oh, either somebody drank or it spilled out. Like, like maybe a probably a more bartender like, messed with somebody or something. I don't know. But I would, uh, hey, I would be upset though if this wasn't here anymore. Yeah. So I, I, I get that would be. <laughs> I have had a history of thinking that I had a full beer and that it was gone and being like, wow, that was weird. That's happened. How did yes. that happen? I have been haunted. Yeah. Better get another one. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently I'm being haunted in bars all exactly, over the country. Exactly. Well, that's a th that was a, the interesting thing to me. It was like, we're going to a haunted bar. I was like, wow, usually I'm just haunted by the mistakes I've made <laughs> being at a bar, yeah. whereas an actual spirit is going to come. Like, that's that's where I want to be. Right, right, yeah. Like, this is not my mistakes here. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. I'm that are causing me all this <laughs> awful feelings <laughs> and guilt. Yeah, right. Um, when you are traveling on the road, do you get to, do you get to be a tourist or is it too busy? I try to. Um, I feel like in my my younger days, uh, I I didn't. Mm. I, I I really despised the travel so much that uh, I let it affect how how I uh, how I I toured. And it was like, oh no, I'm just gonna just do the shows and, and not. I don't really want to see anything else. I don't want to be here. Yeah. Um, and nowadays, I, I I love you know going to to new places that I've never been before, or even places that I've been a hundred times but haven't seen everything. Yeah. Um, I feel like maybe I'm a little bit more uh, relaxed in that 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 setting of of being a tourist, of being out, yeah, and being being out and experiencing things and, and not letting it kind of affect my show yeah. later on. Uh, I feel like it actually enhances the show later on. So yeah. I'm, I'm into it if I, if I have the time. But that's not, that's the hard part, man. Like when when you're on tour, like the the one thing you 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 have is a lot of time, but it's a lot of hurry up and wait. Mm. You know, so you're kind of on someone else's schedule at all, uh, at all times. Um, what's this, aside from the haunted hotel Ouija board, yes. is there, a, what's the scariest place you've been? Scariest is there a place that's been like super creepy that you're like, dang, I don't know if I'm cool with this. Uh, there's a venue in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Actually, where it's located is, uh, the venue's here and it's like down the block from the McDonald's where uh, Jeffrey Dahmer used to pick up like all his, yeah. his victims. So it's already got like a weird, Whole thing around it, yeah. yeah. And deep down in, in in the bowels of that that venue, there's a it's like, a, like an old sports club. There's a huge Olympic sized uh, swimming pool, and there's like locker rooms and all these different things. Uh, and so we would you know take tours of it. And I remember one time in particular, I've been there a couple of times. One time in particular, after the show, it was late, um, and they had like this you know like shower rooms, and we had backstage rooms down there. And I went to I was gonna go take a shower and then go back to the bus after the uh, the night was over. 
and I remember hearing like uh, not a commotion, like uh, what sounded like to me like kids running around laughing and just like you know, and whatever. And I thought to myself, oh, all right, well, it must be like a cleaning crew or something, like brought their kids or yeah. something. And where the that shower room is is next to the Olympic swimming pool. That's now closed, and you can kind of go underneath it and, and check things out. It's really, really creepy. Uh, heard you know chattering one more time, but couldn't find anybody. Later on, went back to the bus. I was like, yeah, I keep hearing like kids or something. They're like, oh, there's, you know, I spoke to somebody at the venue and said nobody's ever, you know, no kids were there. But in that swimming pool, that there was a drowning at one time. So I don't know. I mean, I just got chills. Doesn't all that make you? That. Yeah, dude, that's what I'm weird. saying. Yeah. Like <laughs> that their draft just blew in or I something. Yeah. Like it's weird. I don't. But then again, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it was like you know, it was a high pitched. <laughs> a cleaning high pitched crew. cleaning crew, yeah, yeah you don't know. You have no idea. Um, yeah, see, dude, that's super creepy. It's weird. But yeah. there's something great about being uh, scared in that thrilling way. Not scared in a in a yeah. real life or death way, but in a like, whoa, what's this kind of weird. There's something about that it's rush. It's unsettling. And I really enjoyed it yeah. until, uh, my, <laughs> until my children got old enough to realize that scaring people is funny. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and my daughter, especially my daughter Cherry, she's eight years old now, but she loves to scare people, and yeah. her, you know, like, she'll, she'll like hide behind doors and like jump out at you. Yeah. And I'm now at an age where I think I might have a heart attack. Yeah, and you're so like not cool. Yeah, and yeah. now it's yeah. Now I really hate it. Yeah, like I've, I've survived rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. need to survive my eight year old. I survived the the troop of, of ghost children at, <laughs> yeah. at the Eagle Ballroom, yeah. and now I come home and die. Yeah, yeah. Am I? Did you record an album in a mansion in L.A.? Oh no, there was a bag downstairs. Yes, kind of. Which, happened? it's, yes, it sounds creepy as hell to me. Yes, it was. That actually was, was supposedly haunted as well. We lived in and wrote the record in the Paramore house in, in LA. It's yeah. up in the hill somewhere. And it's it, it's basically, yeah, like a haunted mansion. Yeah. Um, the, the record that we were making at the time was called The Black Braid. There was the, the main house was, say, like, uh, kind of long like this way, and then there was a pool outside, and there was an, like a spire that you could kind of do like a circular stairway up to, and that's where I stayed. Uh, in that room, which isn't creepy, <laughs> yeah. no, not at all. Not yeah. at all. Yeah. I slept up yeah. here and just perched, see, thing, like, perched uh, in a spire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, the story goes that uh, Merle Haggard stayed in that room at some point, all right, and met what he claimed to be a ghost. And, uh, and apparently he wrote, when he, whenever he wrote songs up in that room, in the Spire room, he, uh, the, she, would, she would come and, and visit him and they would write harmonies together. And so that was, that was my room. I never saw anybody, but I did hear things in the walls, which I kind of assumed were records. Mikey had a room that he refused to sleep in. Yeah. <laughs> and he actually ended up sleeping on like George's floor for a long time. We, we were in the house for months. And, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I, no one really had a great time. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. How, how do you know when a song is done when you're writing it? Uh, a better person than I has, has, can be quoted as saying, uh, you don't ever finish a record, you just re relent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to kind of just be like, I, kinda, I have to let go. You know what I mean? I, there's nothing more I can do that will make this better. I'm just going to make it worse. Right. Um, and I feel like that's, you know, with a lot of art, like there, there's, you can always do more. Right. Should you do more? Probably yeah. not. Yeah. You know? um, but then again, you know, there's some songs where it just, it needs to be just a very succinct, uh, you know, simpler the better. It's a new projects. Now, so you're used to the music world, but you're dipping your toes into a whole new venture. Yeah, yeah. Podcasting. Yeah. Yes. It's it's strange to me. I was like, I, I didn't know really what a podcast was for a very long time. I was like, well, it's just people just talking into a recorder. Yeah, you just kind of sit and okay. talk for a little while, and then uh, so here you go. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. It just so happened that uh, a few of my friends, uh, my friend John Hambone, uh, and my friend Sean Simon, who are were in a band that I, I did very very early on my career called Pensy Prep. Yeah. Um, we just were looking for, for a, an excuse, I guess, to hang out and talk. And we were like, well, we go to lunch, you know, every couple of weeks and bullshit. And yeah. Why, if we were to record this, like, I think people would get a little bit more insight into other things. We've been having a really good time. The, we, the first uh, two episodes are out. The third episode's coming out in a couple of days. Yeah. It's called Casual Interactions. 
and uh, it's, yeah. it's one of my, my favorite projects I've ever worked on. It's just so much fun. So what? So you have a podcast coming out. What else is going on now? Frank Iron and Patience was you that. did you released something last year, but the two years ago. So yeah, so was two your last years album. ago was the, the last full length, yeah. uh, and then we did uh, an EP last year. Um, finished recording the new record, like I said about. Yeah, three weeks ago. Yeah. And that will be out, uh, I believe. We haven't announced it yet, so I'm thinking it's. Is this news? Are this we breaking news? news? We're breaking news. Is this an exclusive? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it might be wrong though. I don't yeah. know. You never know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe April, May, yeah. I think is what we're, we're discussing right now. So, about two years ago, and I, I won't get into it too much, but, but, uh, yeah. but I have to ask. Yes, yes, yes. Like two years ago, uh, anniversary of Black Parade, everybody kind of went oh. bonkers thinking uh -huh. about a reunion. <laughs> yeah. Right? It, that did happen. Well, here's the thing. Um, what, was it two years ago, was it? Well, it would have been 2006, did that come out? Right. Okay, oh, it's 2018, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so it would have been like two yeah. years ago ish. So what happened was um, we, we, we wanted to do a 10 year. Real, uh, anniversary release of it, yeah, and and we had like some demos left over and, and and songs that didn't make the record, and we're like, oh cool, like we'll put it all together, and and every year we meet, we have like a barbecue kind of thing, and we like, well that's like we'll have the barbecue, kids will hang out, and then we'll discuss business for like the next year, yeah, basically, and so we're like, oh that'd be really cool, yeah, we should do like a, like a little teaser trailer for it, and and so like we said, all right, that that's what we'll do, and we. You know, told the label we won it, and they made this this trailer, and we released it. And all of a sudden, we're like, "Oh wait!" <laughs> everyone's, everybody, <laughs> everyone's real confused because <laughs> we're just doing an anniversary release, just, yeah. not a tour. And then we not had to like <laughs> come out and be like, "Oh, that was we were just excited yeah, at the barbecue. It made a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was much more clearly yeah, defined so at the barbecue." But here's the thing, you know, we've, we were always like a theatrical band, so like we yeah. wanted to continue in that fashion, but when you're not a band any longer, it's probably harder to do that. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't realize. So, well, 2020 is coming up. Uh-huh. Uh, that would be another anniversary for okay. you guys. For what? I don't know if you're... Isn't Danger Days? That, is that Was be? that 2010? I think so. All right. I think that's 2009. I'm just giving you the heads up. Hey, that just another opportunity to disappoint people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Did you drink my beer? I, I did, did never touch my lips. Not once. You finished my beer. Swear on, four, swear eight, on your life. Seven, two, zero, zero, one, five, three. <laughs> <laughs> awesome.